Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Today I'm going to run through the remainder of the things that I have acquired over the last year for one reason or another and which I've used and enjoyed and which I think you would enjoy having too. And everything has been used, so that's the best recommendation I can give. So here we have a whole bunch of stuff. Where to start? Well, um, let me see. This here is the shiny thing in the middle. I'll just explain what this is. This is a pencil sharpener. And this was given to me last Christmas by my daughter as a Christmas present. And it's a handmade um, brass sharpener. Excuse my inky finger. And um, what you do is you take a pencil and um, with the blade the right way round, you use it to sharpen your pencil to a very fine point like this. I won't show you exactly how it's done, but that's basically it. So if you know somebody who has got absolutely everything for their art studio and um, you don't ever know what to buy them for Christmas, have a look on Jackson's, the English um, company. They sell these. They're a little bit pricey, but they are a special gift. And uh, so that is something that you could consider. It's made by a company called Maker's Cabinet, handmade brass pencil sharpener, something quite different, quite special. Um, I've made a bit of a mess there with the pencil sharpener. Nobody ever said it was the cleanest object on earth. Um, then, okay, next thing to look at, this is a set of core paints, which I was kindly given by somebody who follows us on YouTube. And they come in quite a big tin. There's plenty of space in there for more paints if you um, want to add to this starter collection. And in here we've got um, an ideal choice of colours because you've got um, a yellow, a blue, two reds, one cold and one warm, and a burnt sienna. So phthalo blue, which is a greenish blue uh, on the cool side, and ultramarine, and um, hansa yellow, and pearl red, permanent crimson, and burnt sienna. I'm not quite sure about the validity of the burnt sienna in there. Um, I know that if you mix burnt sienna with ultramarine blue, you get a very nice gray. So they may have put that in there for that to achieve a nice neutral. I think that would make sense. Um, but with these other colors, you can mix practically any basic color that you need. And uh, the thing about these is they have a different um, chemical composition, different binder in them, as I understand it and they're very active on the paper and they dry uh, nearer to the color that you see when they're wet. They dry quite <clears throat> quite brightly. So I don't know if I could, I could try them out for you, couldn't I, as we're going through this and show you. I've got a few here in a little palette. And uh, if I just take a brush and some water, we'll see what happens. I need a piece of paper. This is, oh, this is something else that we um, we started using, Hahnemühle paper this year, which is a German make, and it's a very nice paper. Um, so if I, if I was to wet a little patch there and then pick up a little bit of, let's say, blue, ultramarine, and then drop that there, you can see there is a dramatic amount of movement there, dramatic. And if you spread it even further, it will continue to move. Okay, so this is a characteristic of this paint. I'll try another one. It can be possibly considered to be a little bit uncontrollable, but it's quite fun. You see how that just moves out really quickly. And uh, those two colours together. And we'll see, actually, might come back at the end and see whether this is dried in a rich colour or whether it's faded back a lot. So, yeah, I mean, again, another thing for the painter who has everything, if they haven't got any core paints, most people would be very intrigued to try them out. And I think that would obviously then therefore make a nice gift. 
This is a, another palette. I actually wasn't going to mention this, but I, I will since I've got it in my hands. Um, it's got uh, 12 little sections and you can put your paint from the tube into those sections and you don't have to make such a mess as I did. I put too much in that one. And um, so that's a good way of keeping them ready to use. So pop that over there. Um, okay, so quickly running through some of these things. This is a bottle of iridescent medium from Windsor & Newton. This is nice because if you're doing something for Christmas and you want to give it a bit of an extra sheen, you just pop some of that onto your painting and it gives it, I'm not sure if that's the right colour to try it out on, let's try it on there. Can you see that? There we are. It makes it shimmer and shine. And if you're doing something like um, dragonflies or anything, or fairies' wings or that kind of thing, it can give a little glisten. Give a little glisten. So that's not expensive and it can turn all of your paints into shiny ones, which is nice. So that's uh, Winsor & Newton Iridescent Medium. All of these things, by the way, are on my Amazon shop. You just go to amazon.com slash shop slash Brian Anton Studio and you'll find them all there. And honestly, none of these are that expensive. Talking about shimmers, this is Daniel Smith's version of shimmering. Some of his um, shimmery paints. These are labelled the Jean Haynes set. She's an English painter. She's a very loose watercolour painter and she's endorsed these ones. And you've got here a green, a copper, a ruby, a white, a blue and a gold. And um, they are slightly iridescent. I wouldn't say that they were heavily iridescent, but they are um, a little bit glittery. And I have got those as well somewhere around. Uh, there they are. I've got them in here. This is a little tin that was empty. You can buy these on Amazon too, these empty tins, and you can put your own paints in. And what I did was I bought a bag of these, um, just a tick here. I bought a bag of these little um, half pan containers. These fit into any paint set like this, any tin of paints you can put them into. Then you can put your own choice of colours therein. And that's really quite cool. So if we were to try out one of these, I haven't actually wetted these for a long time. I put them in and I thought, oh, I'll use those for Christmas cards and things. Um, but it hasn't quite got to... I'm going to start doing Christmas paintings and Christmas cards and things like that soon. So just watch the channel for the first wintry things. In fact, um, there might even be something to see at the end of this video. So that looks like that, which, ah, yes, you can see that shining there. Yeah, so that's, that is iridescent as well. I don't know how that will work on top of my tester here. Mm. Oh, that's, yes, no, I shouldn't use that because that paper is not very, it's a little bit too absorbent. So I don't know. I will try those out, actually, in a painting. I'm not sure how iridescent they're going to turn out to be. Um, but Daniel Smith has a good reputation, doesn't he? And, um, whoops, especially in America, where they come from. Uh... For us over here in Europe, they are a bit pricey, but, but you know, if you want something, you're going to get someone to buy it for you for Christmas, aren't you? I don't know. Anyway, so those are professional paints and recommended by Jean Haynes. If you come across one of her books, I'm sure you'd find it interesting. She's got some lovely, um, some lovely books out there. I don't think I've actually got one of hers. <laughs> anyway, um, talking about paper, let me get rid of those. This is an interesting thing. This is a Diane Anton Studio <laughs> um, stone paper book. And this was sent to me by the company that makes them. They're called Etched. 
nothing to do with Etcher. Um, we'll look at their book in a minute. Um, and this paper, when you touch it, it feels like plastic. That's because it is. It is plastic. And But you can draw on it and you can write on it and you can sketch on it and you can make notes. I made, made some notes here about what this stuff is. It's made in China. Um, there's a surprise. Made in Japan. This is some very messy tryouts. It, you can, you can paint on it, but it tends to require some special treatment. But um, it's fun. You get these amazing um, irregular patterns of paint as it, as it sits on the paper. I'll show you how that works. Uh, let's see. Brush. What did I have? I have a core. I wonder how the core would work. Whoops. Let's pick up a bit of blue. And, uh, ah, now that's interesting. Now compare that with ordinary paint. This is core. That is, it's quinacridone gold. That's, I think that's schminker. You see the difference? Huh. Okay, let's try a different color of core. Okay, now I just discovered something. You are here at the moment of discovery. Um, I was going to say, and it's true of most watercolors, that if you paint with watercolour on this stone paper, it will bobble up and act as if it's plastic. Which it does. But I've just discovered that if you use quart paints, that effect is much less. It must be to do with the binder. It must be to do with the binder. This is Core. This is Winsor and Newton. So you could say with some justification that Winsor and Newton paint is no good at all for painting on stone paper. And I'm sure Winsor and Newton would not be unhappy with me saying that um, because they um, obviously weren't intending it to be used to be painted on plastic. This one isn't quite so good, good, but it's still a lot better. This is ultramarine blue. Still a lot better than Isn't that interesting? And what's the other colour here? I've got this and this one. This is alizarin crimson. Look at that. Okay, so from now onwards, when I want to paint on stone paper, it's going to be core all the way. This is alizarin crimson in watercolour. That was... Um, that was... Uh, I think that was a Lizarin Crimson too, wasn't it? I should have tried instead. Um, this one. Cadmium Red. That's gone on a bit better because I've already painted and I've wiped off the paint underneath. But nowhere near as good as the core. So... There's an interesting thing. Well, I hope you find that interesting. I definitely do. So that says something. So there we are. You can buy these on um, Amazon. The stone, it doesn't have my name on the front, but um, the stone paper by Etched. Very interesting. Um, okay, so next thing, water brushes. Here are three water brushes. I discovered these this year when I got my Viviva um, uh, colour sheets 
and they supplied me with this water brush to go with it and um, I liked it a lot and I made a video with it, with one of these and some paint and it did very well so I was very pleased and um, so I would highly recommend if you haven't tried a water brush uh, do try one because they are fun to paint with and you can't go far wrong they're not expensive um, these ones are Kiritaki ones that's that's a good make and what you do is you fill them up with water I'll show you how you do that and then as you're painting you can squeeze more water out to water down what you've got there and it really does actually give you some some new experiences with painting so it's definitely a good idea and to fill it up it's very easy you just unscrew the two parts like that and then you take your glass of water, you put that in, squeeze it, and the bubbles come out. And you squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until the bubbles don't come out anymore, like that. Then you know it's full. And you just put the two pieces back together again, and you're ready to go. So you can get them in different sizes. This is a medium, this is a large. This one I don't think I've used yet. I think that came free with something else. They are very cheap, so they tend to be given away as, as gifts uh, with other things when you buy them. But uh, again, not a bad Christmas tree present. We always used to do Christmas tree presents when our children were small and we used to be constantly looking for little things that you could hang on the tree without breaking the branches. Um, okay, so next thing is this, which is another possible gift for somebody who's got everything. These are pencil extenders. And what you do is you undo the barrel of it and then you put the pencil inside like that. And then you can use a pencil which has become very small. If I can just take it out to show you. See, this is far too small to, to use, obviously, because you can't hold it properly. But once you've put it into your pencil extender, I just need to undo that a bit more. Once you put it in there, I didn't know these existed until recently. Just tighten that up and then you've got a proper pencil and you can use it right to the very last. And when you consider the price of these pencils, that's not exactly an unwelcome idea. So these are Derwent, not expensive. They're just three or four uh, dollars for a set of two, a handy addition to any studio. Um, as is this, this is a shaving brush. Now, I was given that by Sylvia, who won't mind me mentioning her name, I'm sure. And she gave that to me and said, I'm sure you'll find a use for it. And indeed I did, because one of the problems with drawing, when you draw using a pencil, Is you're bound to make a mistake. So what do you want to do? You have to rub it out. So you rub it out. Then what have you got? Bits of rubber all over your paper. Firstly, if you're allergic to latex, you might not want to actually even touch it. That's why I leave the um, label on the packaging on my Stettler Miles plastic. Plastic is not rubber, but it's habit. Um, you don't want to do it with your hands because you'll put grease on the paper. This is perfect. I used to use an old brush, but this is so much better. Four sweeps, five sweeps or whatever, and it's all gone. So you can get these for about $5 on Amazon. They're made from, um, this is a natural fiber. I'm sorry, they're not vegan. You probably can get nylon ones. Uh, this is made from, um, oh, what is it? Oh, I don't know, some kind of animal hair. Anyway. So that's that, another little idea. And this book, nice book by Terry Runyon, Painting Happiness. If you feel like you want to do something really silly, um, I used this design the other day to do a cat. So I made a, a little bit of a, a variation on that. Um, she's got lots and lots of really nice ideas on how to relax when you want to paint something really silly. 
as we all do. Isn't this great? Yes. So I do recommend that by Terry Runyon, Painting Happiness. Who can say fairer than that? Um, next thing is, just move these out the way. Next thing is this. This is a light box. You plug it in. It's going to rain. You turn it on. And then if you want to trace something, you put it on the light like that. And then you get your piece of paper. And this could be a printout of one of our free sketches that you can download for nothing from the website. So you just, you print that out and it might just be a black and white line drawing. And then you put your clean piece of paper that you're gonna paint on on top and you can see what's underneath and you can just trace through. It's an incredibly simple, but very useful little idea. And uh, you can get these on Amazon, this particular one again is in my shop and it's about um, 20 something dollars. I'm just gonna close the door. It's right here. Harper, come in. I don't think, I don't think the cat realizes it's going to be wet outside. So that's a really handy little piece of equipment. I don't know whether this particular brand would last forever but you don't use them every day, so you don't need to pay a fortune. There are some very expensive ones out there if you want to pay more. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is Brusho, which I discovered last year too. I have done one um, uh, tutorial using it, the landscape, which if you want to find out um, how it works, from a beginner's point of view, watch that. I was a little bit overwhelmed by its exciting behavior. Haven't gone back to it yet, but I probably will. <clears throat> if you are given some of this, or if you've got some and you've never used it, this is a very useful tip, which I think, I don't know who told me how to do this, but you don't open the top of the pot, because if you do, you will be forever finding bits of um, dye all over everything. It made a terrible mess of my white table because I made that mistake. <clears throat> so what you do is you get one of these push pins. These ones are ideal with the bit that you can hold on to and the long bit that you can push in. You push it in and then when you want to use it, take that out and you just sprinkle it out of that hole onto the paper. Um, so have a look. I did a landscape, some trees, bits and pieces. I'll put a link in the description below and uh, isn't, this isn't expensive it comes from England it's a very exciting thing if you want to really do something funky um, yeah it's fun it's fun it's not serious art I think it was intended for children but <laughs> but I wouldn't give it to children <laughs> no no not unless you were about to move house um, next thing I'm just going to quickly touch on this box of paints. This is a Paul Rubens set of 24 watercolour paints. Recently we've been using um, some Japanese paints. These ones, the Kuretake set, which is Kuretake Gansai Kanbi, uh, which are very intense, very powerful, very good to use with a hake brush because you can fit the brush into these um, pans. They're nice and big. And I can't say enough good things about these paints. They're so lovely and cheap. $48 for 48 paints. No way is that expensive. Um, but I recently received a set of Paul Rubens watercolor paints, which are made in China. And um, they come in a lovely box with a lovely bag. Um, which will only get ruined, uh, that's somewhere safe. And um, nice shiny iridescent tin, I suppose it's been spray painted. And then inside we have a set of 24 watercolour paints, which I so far have not yet removed. I'm going to do a video on trying this out uh, soon, uh, probably next Saturday, I would think. 
and we'll see how they go. But I must admit, I did unwrap one of them and I did try it out and um, it, just a second. It's very intriguing. I tried out, this is the paint, um, ultramarine, I think they call that. And this is ultramarine from my regular palette. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, let's try to get that in focus. This is less clean, both of them, two different, slightly different shades. Um, I think this is Winsor & Newton. There's a variation in the tone in that little square. It's a bit granulated and it's very slightly darker around the edge where the paint comes to the dry paper. This is the Paul Rubens and that's a completely flat wash. That one too. I didn't do anything special, I just plonked down some paint and it dried without a line around the outside edge. There's no granulation, there's no variation in tone across the whole thing, it's absolutely flat. So obviously the first impression is that if you're going to paint with um, Paul Rubens colours, you're going to get a much more even tone across your painting, chances are. Haven't used them yet, looking forward to trying that out. And look at this, graduated wash. That's the bane of many, many artists is to try to get a graduated wash that hasn't got back runs and, and all sorts of uh, granulation and God knows what else going on in it. Because sometimes you do want to paint a nice blue sky. Um, that was just done, doo -doo 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 -doo, it wasn't even trying. So quite excited by these paints. They will be very different to use from the Kuritake ones. And one reason for that is because the pans are so tiny and remember what we were saying earlier on about um, using this brush in the Kuritake pans, this is not going to work for these. So <laughs> we'll have to use a totally different idea of painting or transfer some of this paint from these little squares onto a bigger palette. So there's different ways you can handle that. But um, So anyway, this is not expensive either. This is also $48 for a set, but there's 24 paints in there rather than 48. So it's on a par with the Kuritake, and uh, I think that's obviously worthwhile experimenting with. And finally, this is something which was a present from Tamsin for Christmas last year. It's called Art Graph, and um, it comes from Portugal. You can get them on Amazon. And um, it's not very expensive. Each one is around about $8.00. And um, you can buy them individually, or you can buy them in sets of three like this, or they do do a set of six of um, really quite nice um, natural colours, so like browns and sepias and things like that, which I think would be really nice to use. And there's a surprise coming here, because when I first saw them and I picked up one of them, I thought, what the heck is this? It looks like Taylor's chalk. It looks like the sort of thing you use to draw... Um, uh, the darts and markings on pa on uh, fabric when you're doing some sewing, making a dress or whatever. Just looks like that. And in fact, a lot of people have compared these pieces of pigment to that. Um, and indeed, you can take it in your hand and you can draw like this. You can. But I want to just point out that that's not necessarily what you want to do. If you draw like that and then you pick up some water and you wet it, it will go lovely dark colour like that because it's solid pigment. So you could use it like that, should you wish to. But the other thing you can do is you can just pick up some colour on your brush. It's a little bit like a colour sheet. Remember, we were talking about the, um, uh, what do you call them, the um, 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 Viva colour sheets. So what you can do is um, you, can, you can use these just like a set of watercolours. So you can put in some blue for a sky. I'm using some of the... Um, the sample of uh, Hanamula paper. I really like this Hanamula paper. I'm going to 
have to invest in some. So you can put in some yellow on top to get some green, make a green field. This is not going to be a work of art, guys. This is just showing you that you can do this. And then you could put in, this is graphite. You could put in some mountains in the distance if you wanted to. Like that. It's a bit bubbly, that graphite one, but I don't think that really matters. And the black, it's quite strong. Just pick up a little bit of it and you can draw anything you like. I'm into Christmas trees at the moment. Draw a Christmas tree and then you could add some yellow and then it'll go green. It's nice to have different things to play with, you know, I mean, you don't need this stuff, but why wouldn't you just play? Do you make a Christmas tree? Put it in a pot. Little red pot. Now these would be nice for children to play with, I would say. I'm not sure how well they lift off. Yeah, that's okay, you can lift that off. Very tolerant paper. What is this one? Hanamula Harmony. And I think you could probably, I'm not sure how strong this white is, whether it would work like um, white gouache or something, but you could come in with some snow on your Christmas tree. I know it's already in a pot, it doesn't need snow, but just trying it out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's quite nice. And um, I'm thinking I might get the sepia set next. They're all in the shop. And when I was trying this out yesterday, for the very first time, I thought I would try a little landscape and I came up with this monochrome landscape, which is something that we should do more of. We ought to do a little bit more black and white work or gray um, because it can be quite effective, can't it? Um, maybe we should do a tutorial soon on how to paint mountains. I haven't really finished this. You could put a little bit more definition in at the back there on the top part of the mountain but leaving spaces leaving white spaces some people call that negative painting but I don't like to think of painting as being negative anyway so that's that I think I'm going to call it today we've learned a few things today um, I'm really astounded by the way the core paints go down on this stone paper it's so much better that's not even beginning to be dry the core ones are starting to be dry and look how intense they are. Yes, I think we're going to have to do some um, some tutorials with the core paints, which have been languishing in my drawer for most of this year. So, time to go. I need a drink of water and uh, it's nearly lunchtime. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye bye.